All right, good evening, good evening. This is Chris Green, your virtual assistant director. Uh, I come to you about once a week with uh, various cool friends and colleagues that I've had over the years over various topics. Some things are business related, some things are not. Tonight is a very special one because it's I'm bringing on somebody that I just adore. Um, actually, I'm wearing a shirt for the evening that I got from the Moulin Rouge, Broadway musical Le Amour, uh, that just expresses the idea of love. Um, I think in the performing arts especially, so much is tied around the concept of love, whether it's you know, the love of music, whether it's singing about love, unrequited love, broken love, all this kind of stuff. Um, it's just a, it's a common theme. So when I reached out to this person, I said, you know, I really want to bring you on the program. I think people would really be interested in, in hearing more about your story and what you're doing. And, you know, she's just an incredibly fabulous talent that I have had the chance to work with before and will again. So she said, let's talk about all the things we love. So bringing on the one and the only Ashley Thunder. Woo, 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 woo. Good evening. I see, Ashley, you have a guest with you. You brought a guest to the program. I did. I brought my newest love. Her name is Grace. Oh, hey, Grace. <gasps> Say hi, Uncle Green. <laughs> Colori verde. <laughs> You're saying hi? You say hi? It's adorable. Hi. Yes. All the things we love. Mm -hmm. Do we have enough time? Uh, well, you know, we can always continue this multiple times because the world needs more thunder. Oh, <laughs> you're so sweet. Well, I had to come to Tampa Bay because this is right. one of the places in the entire world where you get the most lightning and thunder. Exactly. And that's exciting. Mm -hmm. My I see, I see you sporting it. So represent these very first uh, Facebook Live event. Is this her big debut? It is, and I do not put her on social media at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe there's two or three photos on there with her, uh, mm -hmm. just because I want her to live her life, not in uh, in the interwebs. I want her to experience things and. If people want to see her, close family and friends, they can come see her. Yeah. Airing all our business on the internet. <laughs> I love my privacy. Mm -hmm. Oh. In this day and age, what, what is privacy, it seems like? Right. Right. <laughs> all right. So, Ashley, so uh, I know you. As a child, and I have to say, when you said instantly about look, all the things we love, that struck a chord with me because the very first time I met you and it was at St. Pete Opera and you were doing uh, the Blue Fairy and the Pinocchio production. And I saw you walked in the room with all the kids that were kind of doing the meet and greet after the program. And I think the amount of light and love that you emanated in that room really struck me right at the beginning. There's all these little kids that were just so excited to meet the Blue Fairy and had just seen the performance. And, you know, you just connected on a, a very special level with each one of them to the point that I think that you had a, a lasting impact and it just what we can do through, through music and just express expressing love that way just it really struck me so I'm like okay I like this topic it's a little different than what I've done before but I was like this this is great let's talk about it so talk a little bit about what you do music wise so people know what, what's going on I would love to no pun intended <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, I would say that working with children is my absolute favorite. They are open and honest. They have a fresh perspective. They don't have the same scars that adults may have, the things we carry through our lives to protect ourselves from never being hurt again. You know, so anytime I'd recommend that everyone listening, anytime that you're interacting with a child, one, remember that they're a child. You know, they're learning things, they're experiencing things, they're taking things in. And I never sing to make a permanent impression on the child. Mm -hmm. I sing to give them an option. You know, classical music is definitely my strong point, and it's an option for them. And because we're not listening to Metropolitan Live every Saturday morning like, you know, our grandparents may have. Not my grandparents, but some people's grandparents may have right. or parents have. 
um, it's great to to work with the St. Creed Opera to expose them to that type of genre. Yeah. I also uh, work with St. Peter Claver Elementary. It's just outside of Ybor City. Mm -hmm. It is Florida's oldest surviving African-American elementary school oh. and, uh, run by nuns. And mm -hmm. initially it survived a uh, fire. Actually, the original building didn't survive the fire, but yeah. the Ethos survived and they built another school so that children for over the last hundred years have been um, able to attend this school and mm -hmm. typically tuition assisted when needed. So it is a private Catholic school. Oh, wow. I mean, I knew a little bit of that, but I didn't know all of that. That's that's really incredible. And, uh... Yeah. <clears throat> I'll say that having uh, had you on stage with us with the uh, same, the Central Florida Sounds of Freedom when we did our 10th anniversary concert, um, really enjoyed what you bring to the table as far as your artistry and personality. Um, and we're doing that again. I think we're coming up in May. We are going to have uh, three of the pride bands who are involved in the state uh, performing Stonewall 1969, 60, yeah, 1969, mm -hmm. Red um, you're going to provide the vocals for that again. And then uh, legendary Chuck Kenson is doing uh, the poet part from uh, you know, Special Bay News 9 and, and other programs over the years. And he's the voice of BOA. So we're kind of excited to bring those two together um, and, and have that message. Um, so I, I like that you are such a diverse uh, talent, the from opera to, I mean, I've heard you do so classical and just different genres. And it's, it's really, really, really cool. So I, I love that. <laughs> well, gratuitous plug. I started mm -hmm. writing music in 2020. Uh -huh. And I also do a little videography and a little editing. Okay. So first song I ever wrote, you can find on YouTube. Oh. And it's under Ashley Thunder. And okay. I, a lot of people don't know, I am a lover of country music. Mm -hmm. um, I would love yeah. to be... A, a gospel singer, but that's just not in my register. <laughs> I do sing some spirituals, but it's just not in my register. So mm -hmm. I started writing songs and that's just how it all came out. It wasn't my intention to have like an easy listening country sound, mm -hmm. but that's how it came out. It came out pretty good. So if you want to check that out, you can go to Ashley Thunder on YouTube. I will check that out and I'll probably post that, that link somewhere just saying. You know. Okay. <laughs> so what, what inspired you first to, to get into music? What was the, the catalyst that just said, I love this, I want to do this? It was my, this is my second love. It was my first love. My husband encouraged me to do that because I had been laid off from a job back in 2013, mm -hmm. maybe 2014. And uh, he said, you know, you can sing and there's tons of beach bars. You should just sing at beach bars. Just stay busy. Mm -hmm. And I said, that is silly. And I started working on it. And it was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. It was fun. Mm -hmm. um, there were lots of families there. Lots of, you know, just people coming in from out of state. That made a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. and then another friend of ours heard me and he said, my dad is an opera coach and you have quite a range. You should talk to him. Mm -hmm. And from that day on, when I met him, it was a muse moment. It was mm -hmm. a, okay. He told me you're going to come over here four days a week. You're going to rehearse. You're going to take these resources. You're going to listen to these arias. You're going to listen to these operas. And I wasn't exposed to classical music outside of public broadcasting. So I did have a love of Andre Bocelli and mm -hmm. the three singers. I really admired them. I also admire Harry Connick Jr., Aretha Franklin, uh, Tina Turner. Mm -hmm. and, but I, I am a lover of music in different genres, but I never thought that I would be a classical singer. I just kept my mind and my heart open to whatever fit. And then it turns out it <laughs> it worked out very well. <laughs> worked it, out it's funny. Well. Yeah, it's, it's allowed to travel all over the world. So many people. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. So, but it's funny that so many people find music again. I think they, maybe they'll do high school choir or band, and they do things and kind of go away from it. Um, 
But I like hearing your story of how you kind of came back to a little bit and you had the muse and doing things outside the box. Um, talking about being exposed, I was not allowed to listen to a lot of music growing up. But in my grandfather's car, it was always NPR. So I got to hear classical music. I uh, wasn't allowed to listen to pop music at all. So my entire experience was if it was with the church or NPR. And then I got to go to a couple classical music concerts and a couple operas here and there. And it wasn't until really I was driving alone in high school and into college that I started experiencing the bigger world of music. And I, I love every genre. I really do. To me, talent is talent. And if you can connect with your performance, then I'm, I'm going to appreciate it. Um, Interesting. So I didn't I, hear the story. It's it's kind of funny. Like you're not allowed to do music, so instead I get a degree in music composition. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> things just. You're like I'm not allowed to listen to music, so I'm going to do the hardest thing possible. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's funny because you talk about exposure, and you know, a lot of times we are uh, you know kind of built into what we grew up with, our our family, our community, and we have this little bubble. We live in that bubble, and it's hard to get out of that bubble. Uh, but for me, the more I listen to other kinds of music, the more I, I wanted to learn about them, experience them. And so I've been very fortunate that I spent my ah. entire life in the performing arts, but it's been varied. I've done everything from, you know, touring cast with theater shows to being a, a trumpet in the pit, you know, my time at the opera and, you know, community band and high school band directing. I've always done something. I appreciate that. So. One thing, and going back to the Pinocchio thing, because you kind of mentioned about the elementary school and exposure. One thing I really liked about that is for people to see an older version that looks like them on stage. You know, being able to see the same skin color, the same backgrounds. So just don't have exposure to that, regardless of, of where you're coming up. But, I mean, you mentioned country music, opera, and classical, three areas that, I'm sorry, but they're predominantly white overall. So how do we get you know, more exposure for children and youth to see people like you who are out there and, and doing it and saying, hey, this is something you can do. You, this is a passion. Um, just because you're not exposed to it doesn't mean you, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. finding, finding your voice, so to speak, you know, after doing some career, that's, that's fascinating to me. Um, and it, I think it's a really powerful part of your story. Definitely. And I think that through the years, even though I have a great operatic tone, mm -hmm. it chose me. I didn't choose it. You know, I, but I have navigated the world since I was very young. My grandmother taught me that I belong in every room that I'm in. If I'm in there, I belong. If I want to be there, I belong. Mm -hmm. So I never put too much weight on other people's opinions. I never put too much weight on what other people were doing or saying or, uh, and I, I do have people in my family that are not into music. And then they say things like, oh, well, why are you, why are you sound like a white woman? And then I say, <laughs> me, Leontine Price is not a white woman, <laughs> you know? And they're like, oh, who's Leontine Price? Well, let's have a conversation. There you go. <laughs> and it, I do believe that we all came from the same place and we spread all over the world and humans are humans everywhere. Um, I, I just encourage people to lead with an open mind and an open heart and to go with the flow. You know, had I said to my late maestro Mario Laurenti, oh, I don't want to sing classical music. I would have never traveled to Europe. I would have never met you and everybody from the, the band. I would have never, um, you know, really experienced what it's like to be in that limelight and uh, to expand not only my voice, but my mind. And mm -hmm. then I'll get to expand other minds. Um, I'm raising a little yeah. pianist right here. <laughs> Aw. Yeah, yeah. And I, even though I don't have the same formal experience, I have a business degree, I don't have mm -hmm. a music degree, I still work very hard, pardon me. I'll be fine. <laughs> I still work very hard to continue to grow and educate myself. And I think that's why I keep getting, I keep getting gigs with these amazing artists and these educated people. And 
I just covered for Aprile Milio last Saturday, who has been at the Met for over 40 years, retired there, amazing voice, mm -hmm. traveled all over the world. And I just, I'm so humbled by this experience. I, I think it is my purpose to be a voice mm -hmm. for this genre. Mm -hmm. um, one, one thing that I think musical educators could do is they can remind kids that a lot of this modern music, they take licks from classical. Mm -hmm. uh, Jay-Z's Hard Knock Life mm -hmm. took a lick from Broadway and right. it's over and over and over again. And why? Mm -hmm. Because it's amazing. It's a great foundation. Um, now, because classical music, we're, we're taught this broke my this broke my brain a couple years ago when i learned this we're taught in music theory to study classical music theory mm -hmm. which is very eurocentric mm -hmm. but we're not taught to study jazz theory we're not taught to study asian music theory or african music theory mm -hmm. and there are so many different types of styles and rules mm -hmm. and once I learned that, I then had to, I had to experience it all, you know? So you just have to keep your mind open. You have to constantly be learning. You have to constantly, you know, look for resources. I still have a library card that I use very often. I'm constantly going to thrift stores, buying mm -hmm. records, getting books, mm -hmm. um, going on, whether it be on eBay or going on Amazon, and really exploring, you know, the, with the internet, nothing is off limits. You know, the if you want to learn something, if you want to educate yourself, if you want to broaden your horizons, you have the ability to do so. Um, I also think that children don't understand that it takes time. Mm -hmm. You know, I I saw Beyonce and Destiny's Child when they were opening for Brandy, you know, back in like 2005. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> to to get to where she is now, she's a great example because she's mm -hmm. literally running the world, as she likes to say, to right. get there, I mean, she's been doing it for 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. her, and her father really trained that group and trained her not to care what anybody else thought, just to right. get out there and keep working. It doesn't mean it's always going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's always going to be, you know, exceptional or glamorous. You know, I'm glad that in retrospect, I wasn't when I got on the, the video call, but in retrospect, I'm glad that I'm, you know, not feeling 100 percent, but I still showed up to this call mm -hmm. because this is how you do it. You have to put your nose to the grindstone and always be ready. Granted, I needed you to remind me six times and I appreciate Fine. that. It's all good. Hey. I appreciate that. I, the thing is, though, through all this, we had just a, a cool discussion, but you just gave us like a monologue that needs to be, be repeated. And I love it. And I'm going to kind of wrap us up here because I know as a new mom and things going on. Thank but you. something that you said that your grandmother said, that if you're in the room that you want to be in, you belong. Yep. And that really resonates with me because I think a lot of us, regardless of our, our situation and our, our background, don't feel like we belong are waiting for someone to give us that invitation. Right. I like that you said the world is open to you. Do the research, Do the, get your resources. Don't let anyone tell you you can't do something. And if you want to belong in that room, you belong in that room. Absolutely. So, and I think you you just emanate that. So your grandmother did a very good job of instilling that in you. Because that is Thank definitely you. something Beautiful woman. Completely. Beautiful, beautiful woman. And I, I will definitely, you know, I say it a lot. But thank you for emphasizing it. I am going to continue to lead with that when I do talk to kids, even adults. Mm -hmm. You know, adults don't realize that what other people say about you is none of your business. Mm -hmm. If somebody doesn't like you, it's probably because they really want to be you. They want to navigate the world as confident and as kind as you. If somebody says they don't like me or they, you know, may be a little catty towards me. That's not a reflection of me. That's how they feel about themselves. Mm -hmm. And I, I just feel pity for them because they're missing out on a great friendship, you know? Completely. <laughs> so, Ashley, if people want to check out your music, I know you have a web page. What is that address? 
The web page is hey. Ashley Thunder Low, L O W E dot com. However, I've been a little preoccupied. So that <laughs> catch up. So please head to YouTube and you can find some older classical videos. You can find some videos where I sang with Central Florida Lyric when I was pregnant, which that always makes me giggle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then this year, Grace got to go on stage. So everyone got to see my my baby belly and then they got to see what came out of my belly. <laughs> um, well, Thank you, Grace, for lending us your mommy for just a few minutes here for this evening and making your, your big Facebook Live debut. So thank you so much, Ashley. I look forward to working with you and bringing more music to the stage. 